Hi, today we're going to talk about electricity. Um, it is a very big chapter, just like your water cycles, your reproduction plants, and your air and respiratory system. Okay, so P5 generally has a lot of big chapters with a lot of uh, information to memorize. Likewise, uh, electricity chapter. So I'll be splitting up the electricity chapter. Okay, so this is the first part. Okay, let's look at the next slide. So what is electricity? Okay, it is basically a form of energy. Okay, it is a secondary form of energy, which is a very useful way to keep energy. So in the past, uh, we have to rely on wind energy or water energy to do work. So for example, um, you use a water wheel. When the water wheel turns, you turn whatever machine that is attached to it. Okay, so when there's no water, you have a problem uh, because when there's no water, the water wheel don't work and then your machine don't work. So basically, what we have come up with here as an scientists and engineer, what they have come up with is they have turned all this wind and water energy and store them up as electrical energy first. So in a certain situation where you suddenly need it, you don't have to uh, pray for water or uh, wind to come you can since it's already reserved you can it's being stored already you can use the electricity immediately so that's why it's a secondary form of energy because it's converted from another form of energy a primary source of energy okay so electricity is used to basically power, power up a lot of our uh, energy uh, appliances around us uh. so for example your cattle uh, your lights okay so I also, as I was mentioning earlier lah, you can um, convert it from wind and water but most commonly the most common way of uh, getting our energy is through fossil fuels okay what is fossil fuels fossil fuels is basically from the plants the animals like for example dinosaur that died uh, many many years ago so they have been uh, after they, 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 they die, they have been converted into uh, fossil fuels, okay, petrol, and then um, all these huge machines, they will extract up all this oil from under the earth, and then um, this energy, since they are trapped inside these fossil fuels, right, when we burn it, we can generate, uh, we can get uh, energy, and this energy is stored in the form of electricity, lah. okay. So most of our energy nowadays is stored in the form of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, Singapore itself, about 90% of energy comes from fossil fuels, which is also a problem. Um, we'll talk about why fossil fuels is actually a bad form of getting electricity on the uh, next topic. Okay, aside from getting the electricity from the power plant, the other, another common way we uh, get our electricity is by storing it in um, batteries. However, you need to take note of something which all often come up for exam as a trick question. Okay, inside battery, right, it does not contain any electricity. What it contains is actually a chemical. So this chemical, when they come together, they will generate electricity. So that's why when you touch the battery, you don't get elect electrocuted because inside the battery, there's actually no electricity. There's only chemicals. Okay. So, um, in the battery, there's the negative side and the posit positive side that's being split up okay, in the battery itself, which is in the, in the form of chemicals. So, if you use a wire to join them up, okay, after you join them up, it will produce electricity. So, that's how you get electricity from battery. So, you just, you just have to remember that in the battery, there's no electricity. It is purely chemicals. Aside from battery, there's actually many other parts in our circuit, okay, which is a very simple uh, electrical system as shown in a diagram here. Okay, the one at the bottom should have been taught to you when you're in P3 lah. Okay, when you learn about electromagnet. Okay, you should know that when you connect uh, iron nail or steel or steel rod to a battery, okay, and you coil them around, you turn the magnetic material into a electromagnet okay probably back then you haven't learned about switch which we'll talk about later 
So another common example that you probably have not learned before is um, connecting batteries in a circuit with bulb so that um, the light bulb will light up. This is a very common one. Actually, you can find it in your house torch light. Okay, so let's look at the different parts in a circuit. Lah. Okay, uh, there will always be a wire because your wire needs to carry your electricity. Okay, then there will also be your battery which is your energy source. Okay, you have a switch. The switch will help you switch on and switch off the light or the electromagnet by controlling whether or not the electricity flow through. Okay, we will talk about how the switch works on the next slide. And then of course there's the part that you need it to work. For example, if it's a torchlight, you need the bulb. Okay, if it's a doorbell, you need a bell. Okay, or sometimes electromagnet. But uh, P5 usually will be tested on bulb. Uh. Before I can share with you the different parts of a uh, circuit in detail, I need to first talk to you about conductor and insulator of electricity. Uh, conductor of electricity are things that can carry and transport electricity. Whereas insulator of electricity are those that cannot. So insulator is basically the opposite of conductor. Now, um, most metal there will be conductor of electricity lah. Okay, these three silver, copper, and gold they are very good uh, conductor of electricity. In fact, the best conductor of electricity is silver. Okay, however, you should know that uh, silver and gold is quite expensive, so we usually don't use them. Okay, however, they are. They can still be found in your handphone and your computer sometimes. Okay, the most common um, material that's used as a wire it's your copper because copper is a very good conductor of electricity and it is also uh, quite cheap as compared to silver and co uh, gold. Lah. That's why we use common copper very often uh, for wire. Okay, uh, and a kind of uh, met Metal is uh, mercury. Uh, mercury is in liquid state at room temperature. Okay, so it's a very special kind of metal. Okay, most metal they are in solid state lah, but for mercury it is in liquid state. But because it's a metal, so that's why it's still a good conductor of electricity. Okay, common examples of insulator are rubber, plastic, glass, and wood. So you realize that uh, most of the time, uh, your wire, okay, the cable that you see, they are not exactly the wire the one that's inside is the wire so the outside is usually being wrapped up by either a rubber or plastic usually rubber lah, because they are uh, insulator so if you touch the cable you won't get electrocuted and then uh, of course if you watch television program uh, you realize that um, most of the time when you are swimming for example you will not be you'll be advised not to swim because uh, if the lightning strike the pool uh, the water in the pool will conduct electricity and people can die. But actually, uh, that's because the water in the pool is not pure. Pure water is actually an insulator of uh, electricity. Okay? But uh, usually, you won't be tested about pure water in exam. Lah. Since now you have known what is an uh, insulator and what is a conductor, it is easier to explain to you why now. Uh, now so as mentioned previously, usually um, the wire is made from copper. Okay, you have to know this. Huh? So wire is usually made from copper. It can also be used made from silver and gold, but commonly it's made from copper. Okay, because copper, like I mentioned, is a conductor of electricity. So the wire that you always refer to in your house, actually they are not wire. Uh, the wire is the one inside that you seldom see. Because if you does see, lah, that means you are in danger. Because if you accidentally touch, touch them, you get electrocuted. Okay, so usually you don't get to see them. Okay, so all these um, uh, shiny parts, they are your copper, which is your wire. They are the one that carry the electricity. And if you touch it, like I mentioned, you can get an electric shock. Uh, as a layer of, as a protection, usually outside your um, copper wire, there will be a layer of protection. Uh, okay, and that is usually made from rubber. Okay, and usually a good appliance usually they apply a second layer of protection so outside your uh, wire there's one layer and then outside the layer of protection there will be another layer of protection okay but sometimes of course um, for example those disposable Christmas lighting right uh, usually because they are lower cost so you only have one layer of protection so it, it may be a bit dangerous 
okay so as mentioned they are usually made from rubber lah. okay as a layer of protection so in case you when we touch the cable we don't get electric shock because there's a layer of rubber protecting it and rubber is uh, insulator they don't conduct electricity that's why it's safe uh, also they don't melt that easily lah. Now, that's why usually we use rubber instead of a plastic because plastic usually melt uh, at a lower temperature than rubber okay we should all be very familiar with the word switch huh? we use it almost every day okay switch on the light switch off the light um, so how does switch actually controls uh, your lights your electricity the thing is actually electricity is not like your wi-fi it cannot travel in thin air okay it has to be connected okay that's why you need a wire to carry it so actually for example if in, in singapore you don't get to see the uh, power cable okay the overhead power cable but because all our cable is uh, underground okay so from the power plant they'll use the wire to carry it all the way until your house okay very very, very long distance okay so um how the switch work is uh, when there's a gap right it prevents the electricity from flowing okay i will show you uh, the diagram in detail on the next slide uh. so whenever there's a gap electricity cannot flow through anymore okay so this is a simple circuit just with the uh, battery as well as the wire okay so this will work uh, because the chemicals will travel and then they meet once they meet they will produce electricity right? okay because like i told you earlier batteries don't contain electricity contains chemicals so when the chemicals flow through they will generate electricity okay in this case you realize that okay let's say there's a gap here the electricity will travel 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 okay after that they'll stop they'll get stuck okay so okay once they travel until here there will be a gap here they cannot travel anymore okay no traveling Okay, so since they cannot join together, okay, they cannot join, uh, there's a gap there, so no electricity will be produced. Oh, there's a gap there. Okay, with this concept of gaps, right, in between wire, uh, you, it'll be easier for you to understand how the switch works. Uh. Okay, so this is uh, a normal circuit, okay, there's a batteries that contain chemicals, and they travel, 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 they meet each other, generate electricity, and then the light bar light up. So this is a perfect condition uh, because electricity is flowing through, there's no gaps. Okay, so when there's no gaps, the electricity can flow. Okay, so when it can flow, the light bulb will light up. Uh. Okay, so therefore uh, at home when you switch on the light, uh, what does it actually mean? It means you are closing the switch, not opening the switch. Uh. Why do I say that? Because as I mentioned, if you can on the light, that means electricity is flowing through. If electricity is flowing through, that means there's no gap. No gap, that means the switch is close the gap is closed up so when you're on the light it's called close the switch oh then when you switch off the light actually what you're doing is you are creating a gap okay because of the gap there electricity cannot flow through anymore so the light bulb cannot light up okay so when you are switching off the light you're actually opening the switch oh so it's, you just have to remember when you're on the light it's the opposite is the is to close the switch Whereas when you off the light, you are actually doing the opposite, which is opening the switch. Okay, let's look at the different power the light bulbs. Are. It used to be commonly tested a few years back. Now they still test it sometimes, but not as often anymore. Okay, but it's still important for you to know like, at least you must be able to name the different parts of a light bulb. Okay, I'll also be explaining to you their functions. Okay, so in a light bulb, the light bulb needs to carry the electricity la. so you need the wire the wire is basically here okay, all this part is your wire oh, because your electricity needs to enter, enter inside so that's why you need wire inside here okay then you have your um, filament the filament is basically the source of light la. also this whole part here is the one that they generate the light so this is the most important part of the light without this part you have no light okay so it will basically glow okay it's usually made from tungsten which is a material that will glow and produce light when electricity pass through it okay 
uh, the material used will always be high melting point. High melting point meaning it don't melt easily. Uh. Okay. Then of course there will be a layer of glass cover. Okay, usually it's uh, transparent lah. Oh, otherwise if it's opaque then you can't see anything really. No light coming out. Okay. Uh, and it has to be high melting point meaning it also cannot melt easily. Oh, sometimes uh, depending if it's a party maybe people will buy uh, uh, translucent light with color wrapping so that you can change the color of the light. Okay, inside there's this gas called inner gas. Inner gas are basically gas that's non-reactive so that um, the filament won't uh, oxidize and then uh, it, it won't be easy for you to catch fire as well. Because if you leave it empty, uh, uh, oxygen can enter when and oxygen supports burning. Uh, so it's uh, dangerous. So usually we don't leave it empty. We put a layer of inner gas. Okay, gas that's not reactive inside. But it is not important. Uh. Usually it won't be tested, the gas. Uh, the next two part that we're going to talk about is quite important. But you wouldn't see its importance now. Later I'll share with you why is it so important. So um, the bottom part is your casing and tip. They are all made from metal. Reason because you need electricity to flow through. Lah. Or because the wire will be connected to this part. These two parts. That's the entry point and exit point of your electricity. So that's why it is uh, made from metal as well. Okay, now we'll talk about how why casing and tip is so important. Uh, because during exam, you often be tested on how to connect a bulb. It is a very common question, so you need to know it. Uh, I'll show you the wrong example first, but before I show you the wrong example, you need to think of something. Now, inside, I told you before, uh, this is the filament. Okay, this is the filament. Huh? Okay. So the filament is actually connected to two wires. You need to know that one of the wire goes to the casing. The other wire goes to the tip here. During exam, usually they will be very nice to you. They will draw a tip here. So you need to know that it's connected to a tip here. Okay. So anyway, for now, the tip is here. Now, uh, the problem with this connection is that the wire only connects to the tip. So the electricity didn't go here. It didn't come here. So that's why the bulb will not light up. Okay. And for this, the wire is connected, connected to the casing only. No bulb. No the wire is not connected to the tip at all. So the wire did not enter here. La. The electricity did not enter here. La. Sorry. So the bulb will also not light up. Okay. Now let's look at the correct example. Okay, this is a correct example. La. So now it is a perfect condition because it is connected to the tip. It is also connected to the casing, which is what you want. So the electricity can flow through here. So since the electricity can flow through here, okay. The light bulb will light up lah, because electricity passes through the filament, the filament will glow and produce light, so the light bulb will light up. Okay, so to summarize, it's very simple. You just have to remember okay, the light bulb will only light up when two ends of the batteries, meaning the positive and negative sides, is connected to the casing and the tip. Okay, must take note, lah. must be both casing and tip. Lah. Okay. So in case sometimes during exam they say, Oh, I'll only give you one wire. So, how can you still make sure the light bulb will light up? I'll show you two examples. Lah. So, this is the first example. Okay, you can connect one, one end of the uh, battery directly with the bulb, no problem. As long as um, the electricity is flowing, entering through the tip and the casing, both, huh? as I mentioned here. As long as it's entering through the casing and the tip. The other way is you can connect the battery directly to the casing and then the other side enters through the tip. Uh, so these three are possible examples of how you can connect a light bulb. Uh, basically, as I mentioned, as long as you connect one end to the casing, the other end to the tip of the bulb, then the light bulb will light up. Okay? But also, you must make sure the battery is connected correctly. So although the slides today is um, shorter than most of the other slides we've done, but if you look through the, the, the video again, you realize that there's actually a lot of things to memorize. Or even if you refer to a book, there's actually a lot of things to memorize. So although it's short, but a lot of information will memorize. So now we'll run through what we've learned today. Lah. Okay. Um, batteries contains chemical. It doesn't collect con, con, it doesn't contain electricity. Uh, this one is often tested. Okay, you must know that. Uh, when you switch off the light, you're actually opening the switch. And when you switch on the light, 
we are closing the switch. Uh, most metals are conductor. The most common uh, conductor is copper. The best conductor is uh, silver. Um, common insulator will be your rubber. Okay, and to connect to the bulb, the tip and the casing of the bulb must be connected to a wire which is joined to a battery. Okay, that's all.